Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Glad to have you here this Monday, September 20, was it 25th? Getting almost to the end of the month. Thank you for tuning in. There's an emergency alert as far as I'm concerned on two different fronts. One is a bit of speculation that I'm going to do about what something that's just come in news from Russia. You're not going to find the mainstream, but it could be an emergency alert if it's true. But it's just speculation at this point. And the second is what's happening in the bond market and what's happening with the U.S. dollar index. Remember I told you about the deflationary spike event? What I call deflationary spike event? That could lead... Uh, it was what they had in 2008. And if it left unchecked, it would have led to a deflationary collapse within the system. A, a, a bomb of the derivatives markets would have blown up in, in 2008. And they knew it. Right now, what they've done is it doubled down. We got over a quadrillion dollars. I didn't say a trillion. I said a quadrillion. That's a thousand trillion dollars worth of derivatives out there in the derivatives market that could be set off by such an event. And we're seeing the first moves toward such an event because one of the things you're going to see if you're going to have that event is you're going to see a massive move up in the, in, the, in the U.S. on the Dixie, the dollar index. And bonds will spike. And everything else will sell off. So this is an alert on that because I'm seeing these things starting to unfold. It's hinting toward we might be getting very close to this deflationary spike event, which is which is a continuation of what happened in 2008, except with more energy this time because they've leveraged the system all much, so much greater over the last number of years since 2008 until now. Okay, let's get in and take a look at this, what might be, it could be, could be possibly a emergency situation in the war in Ukraine. Let's take a look. Now, I spotted this article, and this sounds really fishy. M a mystery, and this happened, just, just happened. This is fresh off the press. A mystery surrounds a power outage in a major Russian city, St. Petersburg. It's one of your bigger Russian cities to the north. It says that St. Petersburg, Pokovu Airport, and the surrounding areas were hit by a temporary power outage after residents reported hearing a loud sound and a bright flash, according to local telegram channels. The press service of Pokovu Airport told Russia's state-run news agency, Interfax, that a temporary power outage occurred in the airport's domestic flights departure hall on Sunday evening. Electricity was also reported cut off to nearby uh, Shusheri district. So basically the, the size of this is over 100,000 people in Russia. Suddenly everything went black. Dead. After they heard a loud bang... And a bright flash in the sky. Let's take a look at this. Now this is where the speculation comes in. How electromagnetic pulse attacks work. Now what we're looking at is a diagram right here. Let me see if I can get a little bit bigger. This is a diagram right here of what's called a non-nuclear EMP weapon. You see, they, they got a copper winding called a stator winding around the explosive device and an armature cylinder and high explosives. It says the United States has NNEMP weapons, not, and that stands for non-nuclear EMP weapons in its arsenal. Much of the United States EMP research has, revol uh, re has involved high-power microwaves, HPMs, 
that are like a super powerful microwave oven that can generate concentrated beam of microwave energy. In 2012, the United States Air Force successfully demonstrated a missile equipped with tech from the Counter Electronics High Power Microwave Advanced Missile Project called CHAMP. An improved version of that weapon, the High Power Joint Electromagnetic Non-Kinetic Strike Weapon, or what's called hijinks was being tested as of 2022. Non-nuclear EMPs can also come in the form of flux compression generator bombs, which date back to the 1950s. This sort of EMP bomb has a fairly simple design illustrated. There it is. It's not a very complex design. It's basically a copper coil or a stator wire wrapped around the explosive device and 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 this is this is uh this is a, a electromagnetic or produces an emp but it, it it's not nearly as strong as the nuclear nuclear is much much more powerful and would cover a much wider area but see this has got me thinking right this this thing that happened in russia with a hundred thousand people suddenly in the dark in saint petersburg Let's do a little bit further speculation. Now, I'm not saying that that's what this was. But I'm just putting it out there for you guys that these weapons do exist. And I also put it out for you guys what happened in St. Petersburg with the lights going dark in this mysterious power outage in the Russian city. And also the people in there, in the surrounding area... It says the residents having reported hearing a, hearing a loud sound, in other words, an explosion, and then a bright flash, and then everything goes black. Looking at that as evidence, what could it be? Now, I'm not saying it was a new, uh, uh, an EMP, but I'm just saying I'm ju we're just taking a hard look at the evidence here. Okay? We're also going to do a little bit of quick speculation. Let's just for argument's sake, just for speculation, let's say it was an EMP. Where would it come from? Well, obviously, the biggest suspect would be Ukraine. And if that would be the case, if they start using EMPs, if, if, they were to start using EMPs to knock out Russian infrastructure. Well, this would be an absolutely unbelievable escalation in the war. Oh, I say unbelievable. It would be like Russia could absolutely not allow them to knock out their electrical infrastructure with EMPs, even if they were non nuclear EMPs. It would be a no-go. It would be... Talk about a red line. And what, what options would be left for the Russians? To stop Ukraine if Ukraine start, it did start to use weapons like that. Just Now, we're just speculating right now. We're not saying this. that's what this is. But, by gosh, there's quite a little bit of evidence there that's pointing toward... Something unusual happened in St. Petersburg. And this is fresh news. This just happened. What was this mystery surrounding the power outage in a major Russian city? What was it? We don't know at this point. And you just got my speculation on what a possibility of what it could be. But I'm not going to go there and say that's what it was. Certainly not. Uh, taking a look at uh, South China Sea, the Philippines says that Beijing is installing floating barriers in this contested area. This is a highly contested area, and this is a, a, one of the hot spots for, for a war with China and the United States to break out. And China is at it again. They're putting these flotation devices in the water to block people from, from their fishing rights. They're claiming this area of the South China Sea, which is a mineral-rich area. 
unbelievably mineral rich area. It's also uh, has a lot of precious resources in that area. And this is an area of hot contention along with the area around the Taiwanese Strait that goes between China and Taiwan right now. So we got to keep our eye on that. Things are heating up for a war between China and the United States. Uh, I'm not going to get into the Minhan memo at this point in time, but to say that General Minhan has uh, just recently defended his memo. And yeah, I mean, it's... Anyway, we're moving on here. And the first Abrahams tanks are going to arrive in Ukraine. And they've admitted now, they say they risk being destroyed. And there's the first ones being offloaded from the airplane. All prepared. Boy, what a nice looking machine. Well made. Boy, that thing must have cost a fortune. Every nut, every nut and screw and bolt. Probably the same bolt you buy down at the local hardware store for, I don't know, $1.49. When the, they put it on that tank, it cost $1,449 instead of $1.49. It cost $1,449 for the same damn bolt. And who, who gets the bill for all that? The taxpayer. And what's going to happen with these tanks? Oh, it says here they risk being destroyed. Money up in smoke. Anyway, I just, just say... <laughs> That's what war is. War is resources. You want to talk... Uh, they worry about the world's re carbon emissions and stuff like that. Get rid of war! War soaks up and burns up the world's resources and, and uses more carbon emissions than anything out there. And it's the biggest stupidity in the world. It's like a bunch of little kids playing playing cowboys and Indians. Running around, but except they're using real stuff. It's not play, It's but it looks like play. If you ever watched it, it it's the stupidest thing in the world. Now, in Canada's Wonderland, <laughs> now that's a big amusement park up here in Canada. It's kind of like Disney World and stuff. These riders went on this ride, and the ride flipped around upside down and got stuck, and they were hanging upside down. Can you imagine hanging up, completely upside down with your hanging there for 30 minutes? Can you imagine the horror of that and you're stuck you're strapped in and you're like a hundred feet in the air and you're upside down and the thing ain't moving and you don't know when it's ever going to move again and you might as well say your prayers well these people did get down after 30 minutes and i'm just going to say to you guys if just for me personally i ain't getting on no ride that goes upside down because I'm terrified of the idea of getting stuck upside down and not being able to get off that damn thing. And I think for these people that got down off of this thing, and a lot of them were having chest pain after, <laughs> no reason why. It's a wonder I hadn't died. you you got to be good in pretty good shape to hang upside down. I'm going to tell you guys something. You know the safety harnesses that these guys wear on um, buildings and stuff to keep them from falling? And if they fall, the safety harness catches them and their legs like dangle. They got a strap going between their legs and across their chest and stuff that holds them in. And if they if they fall, that, that strap comes up and holds them and they dangle in it. You, they, you can't dangle in that thing for very long. It cuts off your circulation. And hang, your body has a circulatory system. You can't stay upside down for very long either. You were made to work your heart and everything. It has It's unbelievable the pressure it puts on your organs and stuff if you're upside down or if you're in some sort of a safety harness where your blood circulation's cut off. And they will die in those safety harnesses if they're not cut down. I think they have like an hour or something. 
and they got to get them down, or or they will die in the safety harness. It's it's awful, but this is the way your circulatory system works. So I for me, I ain't getting on those rides that go upside down. Anyway, let's move on, and now we're going to take a look. The silver price is, is going down like a stone right now. It's just like a stone sinking in the water. It's 2306. It's down 46 cents and dropping like a stone. And this is another indicator of what it what will happen in a deflationary event like that. The gold's down nine eight dollars and forty cents at 1916. Deflation means simply that there's like a margin call. Everybody's out for dollars because Everybody is being called. So it's almost like in poker, you know, and they say uh, they call you, and you got to, you know, it's all, it's all the hands over. You got to show them what you got. You got to. It's it's a call. It's like it's like a, it it's like dollars suddenly. See what a person thinks they're worth and what they're really worth. Two maybe two different things, and this is, goes with the banking system as well. I mean, they might walk into a man, he's got a store, and he's got a big loan out, a floor plan. The bank calls it a floor plan for his store. They come in and do inventory. They Also, they, they take a look at the area that the store is in and the amount of traffic he gets. and They take everything into consideration, and then they give it a net worth. And they might say, your store is worth $10 million. That's just an evaluation. And that can change. And if there's a margin call, if you has to sell that store unexpectedly, then what's the store worth? Well, it was worth ten, supposedly worth $10 million, but now all of a sudden they sell it for pennies on the dollar and they only get a million dollars. So what about the $9 million? Well, then the creditors are left owing. So then suddenly they have a, a hole in their books that they got to fill. And, and suddenly they need to call in other people who are going down as well. And everybody starts going down together, and then suddenly the few dollars that are left over are left over to fight over them. And so the value of the dollar goes up. Well, this will only go on until it, until it deflates, starts to deflate the system. And, 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 and they've had a couple events like this start to happen, like in this, just before the start of the COVID crisis. Why do you think they did that open window at the Fed? Reverse repo operation. There's trillions of dollars involved. And then they had the other crisis, the SVB banking crisis. $400 billion overnight was lent to these banks during the Silicon Valley crisis. These are deflationary crises. Well, I think the big one's coming. And I call it the deflationary spike event. And what you see is a sell-off, basically. Everybody needs the dollars to satisfy their creditors. And the creditors have a big hole and they need satisfaction. And now suddenly the system starts to deflate upon itself or implode. A stop has to be put to it. Because the system's all credit. <laughs> There's nothing but credit. So if the air starts to leak out of the balloon, it's all air. It's all hot air. Or over 90% of it is hot air. So you got to stop it from leaking. Otherwise, it'll leak down. The whole 90% would leak out. The stock market would fall by over 90%. So it has to be stopped at a certain point. And now, the thing is, is that as it's falling, as it falls further and further in an event like this, the more and more concern comes from the ones in charge. And they will stop it. But now we've got to this point where if they do like they did in 2008 and bail everybody out again, it's going to destroy the dollar. And so now the Fed's trapped. They got this crisis that's looming now, this deflationary crisis. We might be seeing the beginning of it right now. Right now. With gold and, see, they sell everything off in order to... to and, and that... What's that doing? You know, I mean, it's going down. Take a look at cryptos. Again, we see the, them falling and falling quite hard. Bitcoin's down to 26,123. 
Ethereum's at 15.75 and XRP is at 49.6 cents. They're certainly not going up. What's happening with the Dow? The Dow's falling. It fell 164 points. Uh, at 33,799. Taking a look at the crude oil, and crude oil is even falling, 32 cents. But I don't think crude oil is going to go much of anywhere because there's a trade war going on, and they're using crude as a tool. Russia's cut off the crude. They've turned turning off the taps to us. And they're going to let the price go up to 150 bucks, And then from there, it might even go a lot higher. And so get ready to pay a lot more at the pump, guys. It, it, time's coming very soon. Now, here we see these bonds rates. We see yields climbing today, and quite substantially. Look at the 10-year. It's climbed 8 basis points to 4.52. I told you guys, huge trouble will start if it gets over 5%. Oh my gosh. The 30 years, 4.64. It's climbed 11 basis points. Boy, those are big numbers, I'm telling you. And look at the dollar. Making a moonshot here. 106.03. Wow. Look at it go. And it, these are all signs and indicators to me of, of the impending deflationary event that I've been talking about for the last couple years. But it's going to be very short. In fact, it could be so short it's almost not even noticeable. It could happen overnight. I mean, the whole thing could just collapse behind the scenes and freeze. And they could come in and fix it, and then immediately you would see the effects of inflation. I mean, what are they going to do? Are they just going to let the whole thing implode on itself and completely collapse? It would destroy the system. they got to keep this thing going, no matter how bad it is. They can't let the patient die. they got to keep the patient alive, no matter how sick he gets. Because it supports them. They're only in their positions of power out there, in their ivory towers, because the system supports them. So they can't let it fall. Not now, not ever. And so they'll do whatever it takes to support that system. And they're, But they're only going to do that kind of stuff when there's a problem. But the problem is getting very, very close. And it's going to strike suddenly when it strikes. Well, thank you guys for listening to my show. Have a great afternoon. And we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.